fantastic dancer Kalki. Oh, so are you, Gurub. I wouldn't have been able to do it without the other half. So tell us, what does what uh, United by Half mean? I mean, you're a big part of this campaign. I am indeed. Um, for me, it's a really important campaign uh, because, well, you know, UCB is such a huge brand and I think that when a big brand like this comes on board for women empowerment, it means that women empowerment is becoming a commercial issue, an issue which everyone cares about. And I think, well, they're pretty smart to be doing this because, uh, you know, I think that things are changing in a big way. And uh, actually, equality for women and equality in general uh, will make society a better place. It's not just benefiting women, it's also benefiting the rest of society and, and saying that, you know, in order to uplift society, we need to use the other half of the society and reward them. And, uh, you know, it helps for an economy, it helps uh, uh, to alleviate some of the stresses that we have uh, especially as couples living in a in a modern context, so yeah, I'm greatly uh, it's happy. Only, it's only way forward, you know. It's only yeah. way to progress forward, I would think. But anyway, we are going to sit down now. You're we're going to make ourselves yeah. comfortable because yeah. we're inviting two more panelists onto stage. We need some more women on. The we stage. We need some more women on the stage, <laughs> correct? To make it half half. Anyway, so I'm going to call two more very beautiful women onto stage. We're going to start with a good friend of mine, Gul Panag. Can we have Gul on stage, please? All right. Okay. All right. Okay. We're going to get a little serious now, and we're going to uh, do a, a little bit of a panel discussion where I'm going to just keep quiet and uh, take opinions of all these wonderful people we have on stage with us. So, women empowerment, uh, though such a powerful topic, gets used very loosely in today's today's time, where everyone talks about the subject without even understanding the true crux of the term. Well, the aim is to reach out to women and men from modern families to stand up against stereotypes and take a pledge to claim and give their partners their deserving share in a relationship and society. The issue being very close to Benetton, the brand has been promoting it through its women, empowerments pro uh, women, women empowerment programs, five key efforts, sustainable livelihood, non-discrimination and equal opportunities, access to health, quality education and the end of every form of violence against women around the world. Well, in the world we live today, the world we live in today, do you think that we are justifying the term women's empowerment? Meghna, let's start with you. Justifying as in we definitely don't have equality for women, right? Still uh, in our country not or anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the world. I mean, uh, you know, we always say women's rights is really about human rights, right? And if you look at, if you just go through the list of human rights and you kind of compare that with what women uh, what rights women have, you'll find there's a huge disparity. A simple example, uh, and, and you, you know, it's not confined to uh, rural areas or certain areas of the world, it's, it's across all spectrum, all strata of society. Uh, a simple example, you know, women in India after marriage, I know of so many women who have to take permission from their in-laws to go and visit their own parents after marriage which is a basic violation you know fun, a violation of a fundamental right of to freedom of movement which is a basic human right right so the the disparities are huge and there's a lot of work that all of us have to do uh, men and women together to kind of create that equal society that we all aim for so we uh, Gul, what do you I'll, I'll, more questions are coming to my mind from what you said but I'll so stay back. Gul, what do you feel about this? I, think, I don't think it's possible to disagree with anything that Meghna said because uh, we do live in a society that's very, very unequal. And um, I think two additional factors in the Indian society actually make it a further, perhaps deadlier cocktail than anywhere else. And one is that uh, patriarchy in the Indian society is all pervasive. It's, it's perpetuated largely by the female half of the population as well, which is what makes it even more dangerous. Because the best way of, of ensuring something goes on forever is if you get the victims themselves to propagate it. So we're extremely patriarchal. Um, and, and in fact, preference for male children is, as, is still at an all-time high in, in, I would say, more than 80% of India. A lot of us sitting here may not agree with that thought, but that's not the reality of India. The second thing is, I don't think um, we've actually had a women's rights movement or, you know, in Meghna's words, a, a uniform human rights movement or a, or a civil rights movement for that matter. 
the uh, in the west for instance in the uk and in the us so you had a suffragist movement where women actually had to fight for the right to political equality and and fight for the right to vote they were actually beaten to act to ask for the right to vote now we never had that sort of a um, a movement in india and therefore at at some level a lot of the liberties that we have theoretically which are uh, namely theoretical equality in terms of access to opportunity legally socially politically economically access to healthcare and education were just sort of handed to us on a platter and because we to some extent didn't fight for them uh, we don't end up enforcing them in fact the 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 inheritance laws were amended about a couple of years ago to make sure that the the girl child also has an equal right to ancestral property but that's again a right that's not enforced because it was not a right that women fought for there were a few women that fought for it of course they filed petitions and therefore the, the law was revised but as such there hasn't been a, a a a mass outpouring of women together to fight for their rightful place which means accepting that we are different from men and that we have our own special skill set physiologically but also that we deserve equality in the eyes of law and i think that fight hasn't happened which is probably why we're still lagging in inequality lots of women getting together so kalki do you want do you want to add something to that and also yeah. i mean just picking up from what both of them said that we're talking about women empowerment i i mean i'm the sense i'm getting and also something i strongly feel that women themselves have to get that empowerment within themselves and and feel no, empowered to come out uh just picking up from what gul was saying is that um you know this idea that women need to be seen as equal in the eyes of the law i think one of the big problems we have is that we have religious law right for different uh, religious groups so a woman who's muslim will have different rights of divorce than you know a uh, a uh, woman who's secular and uh, this this allows for a huge amount of unfairness that is seen very often in uh, uh, in in our society you know you you have your neighbor who's who's not getting the same rights as you are even though you're both women so i think um, the idea of a uniform uh, civil code is very very important and uh, will will take things a lot further and uh, yeah what were you just saying now i'm talking about uh, a woman feeling empowered enough to yeah, go out there I, and say I, that the I, I deserve an equal space you know <laughs> sorry i think uh, the psyche uh, right now of women is still under a lot of fear you know um we we the the kind of violence that we see uh, towards women uh, keeps us afraid and uh, so for example if you are having a fight at 3 in the morning you're not going to step out of your house a man might you know uh, and that really that that literally physically keeping yourself indoors keeping yourself indoors because of fear that is perpetuated by media by by you know the society and is is really really strong and prevalent here and i think it's really important that we consciously as women step out of our way to to break those barriers so there's something called why loiter which is a um, uh, run by a friend of mine it's it's like women taking public spaces going out at 10 o'clock at night to a park in a group and hanging out you know we see men hanging out smoking a cigarette outside but we never see a bunch of women doing that so reclaiming public spaces making an effort. i'm not saying go out and put yourself in danger at 3 in the morning walk on your own or whatever but find ways to to find that confidence again um you know come together as women do things as as groups of women you know build up the sisterhood all that stuff i love why it took kalki introduced it to me a few years ago yes. and it's it's a really fantastic concept moving on to you sandeep uh, tell us about uh, <laughs> what do you feel i mean i i, I know Benet benetton has has this whole campaign going on but personally i mean with your upbringing and your just seeing women in india personally you know i will uh, oh. yeah hello yeah so uh, i will actually uh, take on from what uh, kalki said when she uh, was addressing you uh, you know for a country's growth we always talk about you know the country has to grow this is the gdp and all the most important thing is if the women is empowered you know you will see a significant contribution coming towards country growth on an automatic basis my personal experience i have been very lucky and privileged uh, that uh, the family in which i have been uh, born and brought up uh, was always i could see the women being empowered and right from my grandmother who had to move along with uh, my dad and other kids uh, at a time of partition from under, during the uh, partition time from pakistan to india now 
So uh, I could see a family evolution which was much better where the women were empowered as compared to uh, my you know, relatives and you know, society around where I could see uh, a big gap where the women were not empowered. So I've been right from my childhood, uh, my sister, my wife, my mother, I've seen because they were empowered uh, during, the, the, during the journey of life. I see the family evolution is much, much better as compared to you know, where, where you see women are not empowered. So for me, it's something which is very close to my heart. It's something which I see on a daily basis. And that's why, you know, one is I'm working for this brand, so I want to contribute towards that. But as a citizen of this country, I feel, you know, this is the best way to actually help country grow. If you work on women empowerment and if you make it happen in the right way, you know, you may invest here, you may get foreign institutional investment, everything can happen. But if this section of population is not empowered, you know, all those things would not add the kind of dimension which this element can add. That's how I look at it.